and we are recording. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Killian. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. So today's the 33rd Sunday. It's in ordinary time. Um, whenever we get to numbers that are like that, 33 and 34, there is no 34th Sunday in the way the calendar works. It's like, wow, it really is the end of the year. That's what it means. That's all it means. Uh, we've done everything. We went through Christmas. We went through Lent and Easter. And now here we are about to go through Advent again. Anyway, <clears throat> as I was sitting my ribbons this morning, I was thinking, wow, we are late in the year. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel may, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Fantastic. While we were praying, I noticed something silly, which is, um, <clears throat> so like this is the, this is the missile, by the way, it's, it's, the, it's the small size of the new edition of the missile. And I just noticed that I'm pretty sure that the two candles are different colors, but that's just something anyway, I'm, I'm going to open the book now and not worry about what's in the cover. Okay, let's keep going. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one <coughs> God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extend her, extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. <clears throat> your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. 
But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me bears much. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return. Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with 10. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So, <clears throat> kind of like last week, we have a gospel that seems to have a big old warning in it somewhere. Last week, we remember, we had the gospel of the wise and foolish virgins. So, some of them were able to get into the wedding feast and some of them were not. And then this gospel, we have very clearly those servants who actually were able to do something with the talent that was given to them or not. So um, there's a shorter version of this gospel and it's just the beginning. It's just the first one of them. Um, uh, here are five more talents. You gave me five, here are five more. Come share in your master's joy, the end of the gospel. And that's usually how this gospel pericope exists throughout the history of reading the gospels liturgically, actually. So the story as it is in scripture is not one that is usually read all at once for the sake of preaching, whatever, because it's not necessary to do that. The, the last part, the unfortunate part, the bad part, the scary part, call it what you will, uh, is not actually necessary for the sake of the thing to transmit what it's, what it's supposed to. Why? Well, the reason why is because remember, this is a parable like so many other parables. What's it about? 
in so many of the parables we've been reading, hearing, let's just say during this time that we've been doing coffee together, we've had a lot of parables and they almost all begin, the kingdom of heaven is like, and then go on from there. This one didn't have that introduction, but there's never a parable that's like, something else that isn't the kingdom of heaven is like they're all about this they're all about like this thing the lord is trying to communicate something to us about the kingdom of heaven is like and so when we have for example in this parable these very various characters revolving around in there it kind of fits with the other parables that we've heard like for example the kingdom of heaven is like a man who throws a feast for his son upon his wedding you know, or a kingdom of heaven is, the kingdom of heaven is like the master who goes and demands an account of the servants in the vineyard and so on. It already is, it's just already there in our minds, even though it wasn't there in the text of the parable today. The reason why the kingdom of heaven is like so many of these things is because ultimately the kingdom of heaven is also the wisdom of God. The kingdom of God is that which is his wisdom, that which is his understanding, and therefore like the wisdom of him with the understanding of him. So <clears throat> often these parables, which are being given to us, transmitted through the history of the church, through the that which is being written down and handed on and preached about, what we're receiving is the kingdom of heaven is like this story. And the story itself tells us something about the kingdom of heaven. So, <clears throat> pardon me, I have whatever, the phlegm is back. So the talent, you know, in, in, this, in this story, in the, in the parable, as we all know, it's just a bar of silver. It's a big old bar, thwack, bar of silver. And um, there's, they're very valuable. So if you think of a denarius as being, you know, a little coin, uh, about it's a day's wage. Then you have other things and you have a talent, which is like years wage, several years wage. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tremendous amount of money. <clears throat> and if you think about it in this way that I'm trying to build up for you today, way to think about it today, this time, the kingdom of heaven, these talents are, are rather like the knowledge of the kingdom of heaven that to someone who has, let's say, five of them and is able to you know, work with those five and able to talk about those five and get some more along the way because being able to talk about some is usually also being able to hear about something else, then it actually works out pretty well because it's that thing which is, again, kind of what we're doing, which is to be able to get together daily and talk about these things and maybe come away with a little bit of a different idea than we had before and add that to what we already had. It's a cumulative kind of process. And that's the truth, whether it's beginning with five or beginning with two. Now, there's also the one. And the reason why I like this particular allegory, and I'm just saying it today, you know, because we have lots of opportunities in the history of our lives to talk about these things. Because there are many people who also have just that one talent, just enough of the knowledge of the kingdom of God to say that, oh, no, I know all about this. And I know that it's good or bad or right or wrong, or I don't need to pay attention to it, or I do need to pay attention to it. And it's just enough. It's only just enough to be satisfied. And what a danger that is. Not just because the gospel says so, but because in our lives, we have found this out. We've seen it that it is incredibly easy to fall into this complacency in the gospel that is, I've already heard about it, I already know, I am good with it, I don't need to hear more. Well, <clears throat> no, it's, it's one of these things which actually you do have to kind of keep trading with these things. It's very much um, that, that idea of exercise that once upon a time I, had uh, on the cup, but this is the cup that Brian used. And so it doesn't have the little tagline on the bottom. It's like spin class for your soul without <clears throat> anyway. But the idea is that without that uh, constantly going at it, not necessarily like it has to be hard every time, but without having it constantly in the, 
milieu of our thoughts. It just sits there and does nothing, rather like that one talent buried in the ground, waiting to be returned and having gotten no increase whatsoever. When we have a little bit, it's worthwhile to keep it going, to keep it in the air, to keep talking, to have that be that jazz that is going on all the time. Because without it, it just doesn't do anything. It's kind of dead. So the kingdom of heaven is like a lot of these things. But most importantly, it's like this thing that grows. So for example, we could also be talking about a mustard seed. In fact, that's actually kind of the reason why I thought of this, because um, the kingdom of heaven is like a number of these events that we have in the gospels that we've been reading about this, you know, this fall, this summer, this fall, and now this winter. And the kingdom of heaven is also like a couple of these, not so much events, but little kinds of occasions. Like, for example, the, <clears throat> the coins that are found um, in the widow's house. You know, like those, those other kinds of the kingdom of heaven is like stories. They're all this constellation of these things. But ultimately, all of them have to do with having something of the wisdom of the kingdom of God. The, the point of the kingdom of heaven parables isn't to tell us about the way in which the kingdom of heaven is governed or who is governing it or how to maintain citizenship or how to do any of those other things which are kind of perfunctory. That comes secondarily. The kingdom of heaven is like, rather, that which is the gospel being taught and received. The kingdom of heaven is very much the knowledge and wisdom of God that is of such great importance and value and worth that today when we hear this gospel about this great treasure that each of these talents are, that are increased by being used well, we do ourselves well to remember how valuable this knowledge and this teaching is. And also how valuable is the opportunity to be able to talk about it. Like that's the best part too. Not just that it exists, but also that there is a place where it can be in, in commerce, in some kind of discussion. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share today about that. As we always do, let's bring our prayers together that we may offer them to our Lord, that he will hear and answer us. For an end to the global coronavirus pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those suffering from the disease, either physically, financially, or emotionally, are healed and fully recovered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let a spirit of unity come to the American people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Catholic faithful remain close to the Lord during these times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For who else or what else shall we pray? Linda asks that we please pray for the young soul of the 13-year-old girl, Iris, who took her own life. For all the young, we pray for their mental health, confidence, and strength to fight this evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The mayor Liz asks that we please pray for Father Gray as he continues his recovery. And also in Thanksgiving for the homecoming of Tammy Granke and for her continuing recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Angel asks that we please pray for her family to return to the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. Let us pray. Be propitious to your people, O God, that freed from every evil, they may serve you with all their heart and ever stand firm under your protection through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. <clears throat> I didn't have a chance to talk about the first or second reading today, but anyway, another time. That reading from Proverbs about the, 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 the wife is a wonderful image. Um, and it's really a very rich piece of scripture. The reason why the first reading was there was to tie it to the gospel and say, wisdom is like, it's actually telling you that wisdom is this. But <clears throat> that first reading, when one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls, going on and on and on. It's not about husbands and wives, it's about something else. And in fact, it's often um, used for that which is the same kind of thing as, well, righteousness generally. It's not about the wife that is far beyond pearls and value, but rather that which is the virtue of wisdom. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. That, little, that one little verse there is so strange. Anyway, look it up. Proverbs chapter 31. Go, go, go to town. Have fun. As we always do, let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. All right, fantastic. Everyone have a wonderful Sunday. See you again tomorrow. God bless. Bye.